Hi guys and welcome to this edition of the American Civil War in 28mm. Today we're looking at the 1st Virginia Cavalry Regiment of the Army of Northern Virginia. Hi guys, so this is the uh, 1st Virginia Cavalry Regiment of the Army of Northern Virginia. Um, it's my rendition of them anyway. Um, I've used Perry's uh, miniatures and I'll talk through uh, my ideas and how I did it um, as I go through the video. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the 1st uh, Virginia. They were raised early on. Um, they were basically supplied um, very well, um, especially the first half of the war. They had a, their own special kind of uniform, which was this Hussar Bars uniform that you see them wearing now. Um, they participated in most of the battles, uh, originally led by Jeb Stuart, the famous cavalier of the Confederate Army. Um, they, they were at what, Bull Run, um, Seven Days Battle, uh, they rode around McClellan, uh, they were at Chancellorsville, Brandy Station, Gettysburg. Um, the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, I mean, Peter, they, were in even, they were using the defense of Petersburg and finally the Appalachian campaign and, and anything else that, you know, any of the smaller, sort of smaller battles that people forget about, like, um, I don't know, like, uh, I'm trying to think now myself, um, like Todd's Tavern and places like that. Um, if you look these places up, the Cedar Church, uh, you know, they were involved in all those sort of campaigns and small battles as well. Um, they had a, a reputation for being very good. They were uh, considered to be elite uh, amongst the uh, Army of Northern Virginia. And um, yeah, so again, led by Jeb Stewart. Jeb Stewart was that flamboyant commander. He went on to lead the brigade and then the um, obviously the division and eventually the the entire cavalry of the army of northern virginia and he was killed in 1864 um, he was a, a controversial figure uh, some people said that he was reckless uh, he let the army down at gettysburg uh, but he was much loved by everybody and he was in my opinion he was a he was a genius cavalryman well i think in everybody's opinion he was a genius cavalryman um, but I suppose a little bit like Custer, you know, you sort of judged on your mistake and his mistake was Gettysburg when he didn't screen the army and uh, Lee sort of walked into a fight he didn't really want. So the rest of his career was absolutely incredible and stellar. So he was, he was, he was like I say, he was a genius, very flamboyant man. Um, so this is my rendition of the um, First Virginia. Um, I've done them uh, in the Hazar Bar uniform of uh, early... Um, 61 to about mid to late 63 so they've all got these hussar bars on their uniform here you can see and the reason I've sort of kind of done all the all the guys in the hussar bar shell jacket is uh, the evidence is, is that they they love this shell jacket it, it set them apart from the rest of the regiments and um, they were issued with it uh, it wasn't until mid 1863 that uh, Richmond issued a new uniforms uh, new shell jackets which were plain without all the hussar bars on and even the, the guys that were veterans in the unit would have kept this shell jacket with, with the hussar bars as long as possible i mean they they really would have done um, so that's why i've gone for this look um, this unit is based in about mid mid to late 1862 um, it's a period that i like i like 1862 1863 um, the wilderness and all that were great as well, but this this is the period that I like the, the look of the soldiers is this period. So I'm not too keen on sort of super bull run type guys, which which um, have uh, you know the the very early uniforms or the very very late war uh, raggedy ass ass out the pants Confederates. So somewhere in the middle is about right for me and my style of painting and, and how I sort of see and like the war. So that's why they look like they do. Um, the guys I've put eyes on them uh, on this on this regiment. I haven't with the rest of the regiments. This was just something I wanted to do as a project for this unit. And uh, but they've added a lot of character to the guys. But personally, 
if you're painting up a big army, you know, you don't really want to be doing eyes unless you've got all the time in the world to do it. If you want to get stuff painted at any reasonable time to be able to paint and play, then you, you're really going to have to consider where you put eyes. Eyes for generals, stuff like that, maybe artillerymen, I don't know. But like I say, this regiment, I wanted to do it, and I think it has added a lot of, of character to the unit. Um, Perry's miniatures are great. Uh, it's, a, it's a great box set. Um, one of the things that is a sort of a minor thing with it is you don't you don't get the the arms of the officers don't come with a braid. So um, on this particular officer, what I did was paint a small triangle, some black dots, and then filled it in with yellow around to give the appearance of braid, which on a 28 mm miniature it looks absolutely fine, so you're not going to worry about that. Um, but I say it's something to be aware of, you have to do that, um, because they don't come with officer arms with braids on, which is a shame, because on the plastic spirit it would have been nice if they just included that, I think. The other um, thing about Perry's miniatures, which I'm, I'm not too keen on, is all the uh, soldiers are just looking straight ahead like toy soldiers so when you buy them and you, you assemble them and you paint them you'll end up with all heads like this guy uh, just looking straight ahead and obviously if they all did that it would be very unrealistic so what i've done is i removed a lot of the heads with a sharp knife turn them to the side you know look look up look down just give them a little bit of um individual um movement it gives movement to the unit you can see here these three guys are looking left uh, he's looking a bit left, straight ahead, he's looking up, looking to the right, looking to the right. So it just makes it look like the whole unit now is actually moving along, um, as opposed to toy soldier look, which everybody's looking exactly the same direction. I did the same thing with the arms. Uh, where the arm joins the body, if you slice a piece off the arm and then stick it on, you'll get a different angle. You see here, this one's slightly forward, this one's sticking out more, this one's turned up more. I mean, it just gives you different variations on the arms because nobody carries the swords the same. These guys are riding horses, you know, they're bouncing along as they go, their arms are going to be all over the place. So even if they were meant to be, you know, um, uh, riding with their with their swords um, in, in ready position, they're, they're still not going to be all exactly the same. They're going to be sort of um, in point in different directions. So again, it gives that appearance, that smoke and mirrors appearance of motion which is what you want with uh, War Games figures. Uh, one little tip, uh, the swords in their hands, this unit's obviously got its swords drawn ready to sort of charge in and cut down some gunners or whatever. So because they've got the swords in their hands, remove the sword from the hilt. So if you see here the trumpeter, this is what they'll look like. They'll have the, the sword in the hilt. And so will these guys, so you need to just trim it off so that they, um, they've only got one sword in their hand. They're saying, just remember, I've seen units where people have left them on, they haven't noticed, it's just one of those things. So, uh, yep, there you go. Um, so, again, I've gone for the early war look. Um, the, the horse furniture is very similar. They were all issued with, this, this particular regiment was all issued with blue blankets in Richmond. Um, and they they tended to, to, to last a long time. So the blankets on the horses at the front would have remained like this for at least the first couple of years. Um, after that, towards the end of the war, obviously 64 onwards, they would have been changed. All sorts of different colors would have come in as men went home and didn't come back. And as the new guys joined the regiment with whatever they brought with them and they, they didn't get issued equipment, they would have changed. But for the period I'm doing 62, they've got this slightly uniform look, which is unusual for Confederates because everyone just thinks all Confederates are a hodgepodge of uniforms. But, you know, in 62, 63, there was quite a few regiments that were quite uniform. So. Oh, here's a replacement guy. Look, he's got a different slouch hat to the others. So you can see it's all sort of coming in slowly. Um, the stripes on the arms for the corporals and the sergeants are bigger than they would be. And that's just, again, because they're 28mm figures, it just stands out a little bit better. Again, it's a, it's a smoke and mirrors technique, um, which just works quite well, I think. Uh, it shows, shows who the corporal is from, you know, from tabletop height when you're looking down. Um, and that, you know, I think that's... That, that works. Sometimes things have to be slightly bigger on a, on a miniature um, for you to, to appreciate and see um, the, what's actually on the miniature. Um, take another example, the eyes will be slightly bigger on miniatures than they are in real life. If you met this guy in real life, you, you probably wouldn't sit down and have a cup of coffee with him. But uh, on a tabletop miniature, the eyes look fine like that.
Uh, the horse furniture, like I say, is pretty standard. However, they've all got leather saddlebags, which were, again, uh, they bring their own or they'll be issued, but they tended all to be sort of natural colored leathers. Um, uh, rear blanket rolls uh, tended to be more um, individual. So although they were issued, uh, a few issues of different colors, uh, they've got grays, they've got blacks. Um, so blue, gray, brown, uh, you know, they, the, so the rear, the rear horse ones are slightly different. Um, the carbines are slung on their backs. And so look, right, so as you can see here, the blanket rolls are kind of mixed up a little bit at the back. They do look a bit different. Um, all the horse blankets that they're sitting on are grey. Um, again, this was an issue that they received, so um, that's what I've gone with. The flag is the um, third pattern bunting flag. So this is the uh, bunting is the stuff that goes around the edge. That's white. Um, earlier flags had yellow. Uh, this particular regiment, there's second pattern bunting flag, uh, which had yellow and 12 stars, was returned in early 62 um, in bad shape. And they were issued with a third pattern bunting flag, which is this one. So that's what I've gone for on this unit. Um, again, with the flags, uh, it's, it's, I use GMB flags, which are absolutely stunning. I spent an absolute fortune with that guy at GMB, but I would say, you know, if, if, you, if you're taking this much time to paint things and to sort of build things up, you know, what's, what's another three or four quid for a flag if it makes the, uh, the unit look that much better, which personally I think it does. I think the, the GMB flags are absolutely stunning. Uh, another thing on the bases, I tend to do my bases like this because I think it gives a more natural look. I mean, I've seen people, I used to do it myself, just used to paint the base or sand the base and then dip it in flock and it'd just be a great big green slab. Um, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, it's a tabletop game at the end of the day, but for me personally, American Civil War in 28mm, I'd like to put a little bit more effort into the bases. You spend so much time painting the figures and building them spending the money on the flags and then it's a shame that people don't concentrate on the bases a little bit more um, so these are sand covered and obviously the dry brush in various earth shades to give this this look dark and light um, and then the the uh, flowers are added um, and the flowers are all um, from uh, grass for gamers uh, which is a fantastic they, they make fantastic base scenery in my opinion uh, the various tufts um, and then the flowers are added to the tufts and what I do if you put these flowers on in chunks they'll look too thick so I put them on let them dry and then I get a pair of tweezers and I basically pluck them so that you end up with uh, spaced out like this which is like natural flowers look like and less is better don't go putting too many flowers on because you know they, they won't look right so less is definitely better when it comes to stuff like that so there you go, that's the uh, first Virginia. Um, it's uh, the first unit I've painted for the American Civil War battles that Self and Drew around are doing. I've got another two regiments of um, Confederate cavalry with swords drawn uh, from this brigade, which I'll show you. Uh, they're a little bit more kind of what you'd expect from Confederate cavalry, a little bit more non-uniformed. Um, and I've got a fourth regiment in the brigade which has got carbines and pistols, uh, some conversions there, which I will show you as well. Um, so yeah, I'm um, looking forward to the series coming out with different stuff. I've got, you know, all those wild regiments and stuff we've paint, painted up. So um, yeah, these are the, like I say, this is the, the style of the figures we will be doing in the series. I hope you like them. Um, if you like this, uh, this video and you like these uh, figures, I'll leave some mentions in the comments. If you want to see certain units painted or done, let me know and um, I'll see if I can um, sort of help you out. So, okay, thanks for watching and uh, happy gaming.